Okay, we are good to go. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone. Uh, Welcome to the student track uh, session one of the IEEE Region 10 SYWL 2020. Yeah, my name is Supavadi Aramvit and uh, I am the general co-chair of the uh, SYWL and also uh, I am the uh, Region 10 second chapter committee chair. I am the member of educational activity board and especially uh, for the importance of this session that we have today, I'm proud to say that uh, I am the HKN professional member. I was inducted in November 2015, and I'm also the faculty advisor of the, the Mu Data chapter at the Chulalongkorn University, Bangkok, Thailand. So uh, today the session is about uh, HKN, I'm proud to be the uh, a moderator of uh, this session and just to, to, to give you a very short uh, caption about uh, HKN. So HKN we call IEEE at the Capenu. So it is the uh, honor society that uh, comprise of the professional and university students who have demonstrated scholarship, character and attitude. And then also at the same time as an IEEE member, they perform the volunteer, they perform a community, excellent community service. Okay, so somehow that that uh, quality uh, has has them to induct into this uh, honor society. Okay, so uh, if we uh, see each other, I mean, uh, we are the IEEE at the capital member. So it's uh, identified that uh, we are the technical leader through this community service, leadership practice and lifelong experience. So uh, today's session, uh, we are very glad uh, to have several of the uh, two distinguished keynote speaker and then also uh, our uh, plenary uh, speaker and then also on the panel discussion. Let me briefly introduce uh, first. Uh, we have uh, Nancy uh, Austin, she is a director of at uh, the Capenu. Uh, she will come to give a welcome address. And next is uh, Ed, uh, Rasset, Edward Rasset. So he is a uh, current uh, 2020 IEEE uh, at the Capital Society president. Uh, later, he will also uh, give uh, some talk uh, to say uh, what is uh, HKN. And then we have Professor Lawrence Wong. So uh, I believe Region 10 would be very familiar with him. He is a past director of IEEE Region 10. And also, I mean, the, the also the former uh, vice president of the MGA and also the director in conference operation. And next uh, we have Michael L. Benson. He is the uh, HKN governor uh, region three and four, also the chair of the membership and uh, chapter committee. And we have uh, Sandro Santoni. So he's also the student governor of the uh, HKN and also the corresponding secretary of the New, new chapter of the HKN. And later we have the panel discussion speaker. So that come from the, the chapter uh, president okay, of uh, the, the chapter that we have in the Asia Pacific. So first we have uh, Mr. Kandan Kumar. So he is, is a chair uh, of the uh, IEEE MUSAI at the uh, Indian Institute of Science uh, in Bangalore. And then we have the Ms. Tita Pond Kanok Ratana. So she is the uh, HKN chapter uh, president of the uh, Mu Theta. And then we have uh, Obo Sao. So he's a uh, HKN chapter president of University of Kew's Land, uh, Mu Kappa. Okay, and uh, I'm glad uh, to be the moderator of this session today. So uh, let's first uh, hear uh, from Nancy Austin. Right, so she will give the uh, welcome address. So Nancy, the floor is yours. Good morning, Sapavati. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to all of you in Region 10 for inviting me and some members of my board and uh, other participants, volunteers and at a to be with you today. We're really delighted for this experience. We're really excited about the chapters we have in Region 10, what they've been able to accomplish and really what at a can do for you personally, for your chapter, for your university, for your career. Um, as a student and as a professional. So we're real excited for this opportunity and looking forward to expanding and being able to reach out to more people. So Bhavati has been extremely helpful uh, with us expanding into Region 10 and so is Dr. Wong. So we're really grateful to them for the chapters that we do have. And again, like I said, I have members of my board of governors 
One thing I'll point out is that we have our president and and um, Michael Benson, our our member and chapter committee and region committee member, but we have a student governor on the on the on with us today. Etta Kapanu is a run by a board of governors, so we're thirteen members of the board of governors. We work through educational activities at IEEE. And of those 13 board members that run the governance and oversight of Etta Kapanu, I am the staff member responsible for Etta Kapanu. I've been there eight years. But like I said, Sandro Sotroni is on the phone today. He's one of our student governors. We're one organization in IEEE that actually has voting students on the board. They actually have a say in the direction of the organization. We're really proud of that. Our student governors bring so much richness, idea, and I, so many great ideas and so much to our uh, our program. So one of the questions I get a lot, and I particularly outside of the United States, is what is an honor society? What does that mean? Why why would we have an honor society? Well, as you'll learn, Etta Kapanu was formed in 1904, so we've been around a really long time and part of IEEE for 10 years, just celebrating our 10 years with IEEE. But an honor society is a very well established concept in the United States. There are many honor societies. There's an honor society for just about every discipline. So this is very accepted and very well known and a, a very established concept. Employers understand the concept of an honor society. What does it take to be invited to join an honor society? What do you have to achieve in order to be part of an honor society? And quite frankly, the ex expectations of you as being part of an honor society. So I know this has a, been a concept that's that's spreading throughout the world. Uh, we know it's a new concept for you, and I'm always happy to talk to you about that and how that applies in a, in a future conversation that we can always have. Um, I do want to say the one thing that I tell people about Etta Kapanu, Etta Kapanu is never given, it's always earned. So those that are Etta Kapanu have earned the right to call themselves Etta Kapanu through their scholarship, through their scholarly attainments, what they've shown, the commitment they've shown to students, because you only get to be the top of your class by working very, very hard. But there's more. There's the attitude. And we talk about common sense and how you how you um, organize your life and how you treat others, how you reach out and help others in the community. And there's that um, Scott, uh, Scott's character part of it, which really is about ethical behavior and it is about community service. Um, so Etta Kapanu is not about what you get. It's about what you get to give. And we always say people that give, people that give back and do a lot in their communities, within their universities, within their companies, people that give to others really learn a lot themselves. So by giving to others, by just demonstrating your scholarship, attitude, character, you actually build your own professional skills, you build your resume, but also your value as a member of the, your community, a member of your university, a member of your company, and then really all of who you are as a professional. So it's really a great pat on the back. Um, it's in a way, it's it's a recognition of your accomplishments. Uh, Mary Ward Callen, who's the managing director of um, technical activities like IEEE, usually says it's like the fellows program for students. So this is a way to recognize early in their career as a student, young people who have really distinguished themselves through their accomplishments. Um, it does it, it does recognize them for that, but then allows them to have another way in which to develop themselves to give back to their communities to develop their own skills their professional develop professionally as well as as an engineer to create what we call the complete engineer one where scholarship attitude character is balanced like in our wheatstone bridge you'll see in our symbol um, to live a balanced life and to be a professional engineer. So we really are excited to share this concept with you. Etta Kapanu sound is a Greek name. Um, and our name HKN comes from the translation of those Greek letters, Etta Kapanu, ergo HKN. So like I said, I'm delighted to be with you today. I'm delighted to have my president, uh, Ed Resnick and Michael Benson, Sandro, and the other, uh, the other presidents of our chapters at Region 10.
Thanks so much for having me and I look forward to continuing the conversation in this meeting and after. Okay, thank you very much, Nancy. So, so that uh, would give us uh, a little bit more about what HKN is about. And I like when you say that uh, is a like a fellow status of the student. Yeah, I think this is very encouraging. Yeah, and and this very special. Yeah. Uh, so next, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Edward Rasek, uh, at HKN president. Uh, so he will talk about the the broad canvas of the. Uh, at the capital society overview benefit and insight of the at the capital operation so at uh, the floor is yours okay thank you and i'm trying to share my screen which has the presentation um, it was for a second I did send over Ed's presentation. Um, oh, there you go. Okay, thanks. Is it uh, showing? I'm sharing my screen. Can we see the screen? Can you guys see the screen? Yes, you can see your screen. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'll move down to the next one. This is the introduction slide. This is the, uh, this is the topic, is the title of the month section within the uh, uh, students' panel session today. So the title of this thing is really the broad canvas of the population. And actually talk a little bit about it, but this is a little bit of flavor. It's very much so. It's Sorry, Ed, uh, we, we cannot hear you clearly. We, we cannot hear you clearly. Uh, it is possible you could use a mi microphone or something. It's, it's not clear, yeah, your voice. Dr. Ed, would you like to turn yeah. off your video and uh, yeah, it would be better to turn off your video? Yeah, I'll try to stop.
we're going to stop the video. And yes, is it is it better? Yes. Great. Okay, so what I uh, this thing under and the slide under which you can see is that Beta Kappa Nu version is back in 2010 and became uh, a larger and larger complex because it includes all the fields of engineering, all the fields of discipline, and the actively fields of engineering, which is quite broad. And from an organizational standpoint, it uh, reports to the educational activities operating. This uh, session here is put on by the member and geographic activities. Educational activities is a parallel group within actively. We report into the educational activity, which then reports into the board of directors, the same that uh, MGA or the pen. So, I have to advance to the next slide. Next is and it's structured entirely around chapters, and these chapters are located at different regions. And the chapters all operate autonomously within the guidance of the parent, I could be the administrative organization that is capital to them. And basically, we flow down from that to the Structure about how this chapter is supposed to operate. And all the speakers we have here today, um, with the exception of the, of the section, uh, people that climbed over the panel, we all people from the parent or research and uh, the organizing body of the Japanese who we represent who is the parent of the Japanese group. So, Eddie Kaplan itself, I think Eddie Kaplan is really all focused on the chapter, and we have about 20. 270 worldwide, and there are 10 in Region 10. And there's about 3,000 new members inducted annually. And every year, the people in the chapters of the universities perform about 100,000 hours of service to the community, to the university, and to other students. These community hours, the 100,000 hours of volunteer time, are all determined by the different chapters. And so all these 270 chapters. Together, put out about 100,000 hours of volunteer time to help the university, help the profession, and help the students. I said this is the parent organization, so the question I want to point out a little bit about the structure of the Ada Kappa Nu. So, what does the parent Ada Kappa Nu group do to Kappa? Well, we provide a governing and operating structure to down the requirements for the minimum number of officer positions and find who the, what the officer positions are. Have a job description for the, the uh, chapter office position. So the chapters know what positions are supposed to fill, what the requirements are for those positions, and uh, the construct around how the chapters are operated. My officer training and uh, leadership training through various different mechanisms throughout the organization throughout the year. And we also provide some tools to help the chapters operate. And some examples of this is that we maintain a website where all the chapters. We have various social media outlets, so all the chapters can go to Ada Kappa Nu. Whether they're dealing with any kind of social media, they can also have their own. So we provide a uh, overarching social media ability for them to communicate external uh, to the world. And then we also have a lot of chapter communication and networking opportunities. We provide a lot of those to the chapter. So that's uh, that's what we do, and this is. Only a very, very top level view of what we do. There's many, many more things that we do. The very different operating committees, like the number of six and chapters, who the chair of that, who's in the round, who's my convention. We have uh, awards, uh, maybe we have a communication, uh, we have activities, uh, publications, and uh, publicity and communication committees. A lot of uh, main operational activities. 
that data cap needs has to do to maintain itself and to maintain support for cap needs are really the body and the organizer itself can departmentalize what tasks to do and what functions they need to be able to uh, and to support ourselves. Uh, Captain News, the parent group also does some publishing. We publish a Captain newsletter that goes out to all the Captain offices in all Captain. We publish an alumni newsletter that goes out to all the alumni. And we have a professional community magazine called The Beard. And this goes out to some 40,000 people uh, internationally. Uh, all, the, all the Captain get them, the alumni get them, and other people who will, all professional members get them, and anyone else who uh, is trying to communicate. The values and activities that are happening with the support magazine and uh, for those abroad with the people. And the IEEE Academy also hosts various conferences outside the conference, and one of them is the Capitalist Industry Conference, and I'll say a little bit more of those uh, later. So next slide is like what we are trying to do and where we are trying to go as an organization. Uh, since the merger with the activity in 2010, there's been some significant changes to the scope of data capital and the focus of data capital and, uh, uh, and what data capital is doing. So we are changing our focus uh, subtly but very strongly to focus on making better opportunities available to the students as well. The Student Leadership Conference, which was originally a, a, a conference that uh, chapter officers brought together to share common skills, common problems, common successes, and common other issues, this has been being this is being turned now into the Professional Skill Development Conference, where we uh, do a lot of things to help the, uh, become a better, stronger member of their professional community faster. So we provide training on tools that are needed in the profession that no one learns in the classroom. So we have negotiating skills, we talk about uh, the financial skills and, and uh, communication skills. We try to communicate that in a manner that the students can appreciate why it's so important to have these things in your toolkit as you move off into the industry. So there's more to uh, what the, the companies or the university effectively than just having a degree from uh, a credit university that affects other skills and try to help the students uh, obtain those skills. Uh, and lifelong learning activities that are in place, we try to help the students have these kinds of skills that they go off to their career. So it begins with a student member and we fill our aid account for all throughout the professional career. We're trying to do something, more things as we go along to try to help the students in the, in the graduate school and then help them as they enter their profession. And we also have uh, a new program that we sort of expected. And the pathways to industry right now is very similar to what I described with the length of students, what kind of professional skills are necessary once you leave the university. We're trying to tell them things when they're undergraduate students, what to expect when you work at a company. We try to tell them things like negotiating skills, which you would need to know the development tool of how you the like, environment with the company really require. Uh, other things about uh, the, the performance of the introduction letter to the company. We try to tell them information about that so the university doesn't teach them, but we can teach to them from our skill base. Part of the skill base is the alumni. So we have a lot of alumni who like member alone. And we are trying to get more and more involvement from those alumni to help the students, help the faculty. Uh, a lot of career guidance, career guidance, a lot of things. Like I said, we support life and are more academia to learn things. And when we first started job or started career university, we learn. I wish I hadn't come back. We're trying to be able to use the alumni to communicate that kind of information back to the staff and help the students be better prepared when they enter the, the workforce, either in academia or in the And another thing we do along the way is we really do want to partner with the professionals. We want to partner with, with uh, NGO or other regions. And we're, as I said, we're very happy to uh, be invited to this event today and this event because 
one of our strategic goals is to become more of a partner with the sections and regions and become more present, get more involved in the security branches when we have a more involved in the discussion. And that's one of our goals, and we're trying to do that on a continual basis as we go forward. And that's another thing that's been changed. Uh, has emerged in this last year. We didn't have anything like that prior to that debate. Now we focus on that and become a much better, stronger organization by partnering with other stronger organizations in the uh, right now and, uh, and move, move the conversation forward and then help improve uh, where we offer the decision. That's the end of it. If there's any questions, you can uh, answer them now or wait for the next one. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, Ed, for, for the presentation. So we, we know now uh, where HKN is leading uh, and also like the strategic plan. So uh, I hope we could have time to discuss with you during the networking session. Uh, so next, I would like to welcome uh, Michael Benson. Yeah, so he will talk about the HKN Global Perspective uh, Best Practices and Chapter Success Strategy. So, Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, and um, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, again, I, my name is Michael Benson, and I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, it's great to follow our, our president at Bresic, uh, who gave a great overview of the society. I'm going to follow that up a little bit. Let's see here. Hopefully you can see my screen. Excellent. So I've been asked to provide a global perspective as well as uh, best practices, tips and tricks uh, for successes and will happily do so. Uh, I'm gonna provide a little bit of a recap, I suppose, as to what our society is um, and what we're doing and then kind of provide commentary on that as to how it relates to what our uh, fantastic chapters in Region 10 are doing, how to create a new chapter for those that are listening that might be interested, uh, and, and ways we can go from there. So um, looking forward to <clears throat> going through this with you and uh, looking forward to some questions at the end and or during the networking piece. So as both Nancy and Ed mentioned, as a quick recap, uh, we were founded as an honor society back in 1904 in the University of Illinois. Um, and we merged 106 years later with the IEEE uh, and became the Honor Society of the IEEE. And our um, purview expanded at that point. Uh, up until 2010, we were in the United States only. And uh, since 2010, we've expanded globally. And uh, we are recognized around the globe and certainly in Region 10 as the one Honor Society, whatever that might be, uh, that represents the highest values of our profession. And Nancy mentioned this as well that. Once we um, left the United States, a, a challenge that we've had to address is trying to help folks understand what is an honor society, because in many places, they, didn't, they don't exist. So as we uh, are exporting this from the United States, trying to find the niche in each area around the world as to what is Ada Kappa Nu in Region 6, in Region 8, and here in Region 10. Um, so. I'd be remiss if I didn't note that uh, just over just celebrate our 10 year anniversary uh, with the merger with IEEE and we have over 200,000 alumni um, from that entire period. Right? So from the 1904 start through today and we uh, continue to initiate and induct folks every day. Nancy uh, and Ed both spoke to our Kind of founding principles of scholarship, character, and attitude. And we truly believe that a good supply of common sense um, is really required to make the acquired knowledge, information, and ideas more useful. So let's first talk about how would you form a chapter? So there are a few criteria. Uh, you have to have, be an institution of higher education that awards a Bachelor of Engineering, a Bachelor of Science, or an equivalent degree. Uh, and then also, two, the program uh, within the NIEEE field of interest, uh, again, our, from our history would be electrical engineering, and then we expand to computer engineering, computer science, but we have some programs that might be biomedical engineering, mechanical engineering, etc. Again, as long as it's related within the IEEE uh, technical fields of interest um, and related to our core programs there, 
Uh, the degree program must be accredited. Um, and it, again, as we travel around the world, uh, there are regional and country level accreditation bodies. Uh, and so long as they are signatory to one of the major accords, um, that works for us. And if the your program at your institution meets these criteria, let's talk. We'd love to have a chapter. Uh, what happens then is uh, a an inquiry, a petition rather, be submitted to the society via our website, hkn.org. Faculty, students, administrators all work together uh, to construct a petition that would go to our board of governors uh, that Ed chairs uh, and that Sandra and I serve on. And uh, petitions reviewed by multiple uh, folks. And then if approved, uh, a new chapter is chartered. And we're going to talk about the chapters here in region 10 in a second and some of the best practices both within the region and beyond. But you know, just note that kind of globally, <clears throat> we we look to the benefits, right? What is the benefit of an ADA cap a new chapter, say, relative to an IEEE student branch or, or anything else? And they're really synergistic. An HKN chapter, uh, ADA cap a new membership, as it says, designation, it's a recognition of high achievement, but also being well-rounded, having a positive attitude. Employers around the world recognize this, and we're doing a great deal um, to continue to promote this. It's really networking opportunities, uh, and there are a variety of, of other things too. So access to key university decision makers, but also sharing a tradition with over 200,000 uh, people, which is really fantastic. So we've talked about um, that, and, and now getting into some of the best practices, right? We, as we say, what are the benefits to the university of a chapter? Well, uh, you can see on the slide here uh, the various programs we offer from uh, outreach, social activities, tutoring, and what have you. These are all best practices, right? Our chapters engage in STEM outreach. Our chapters engage in tutoring, uh, hosting technical activities, which we'll show shortly. Uh, providing networking, but ultimately providing a community. And I like to say that Ada Kappa Nu is truly a community of communities. Each chapter is their own community, and then they're a part of a larger community too. Uh, and then we add our alumni in, uh, as Ed was speaking to. So as far as what makes our chapter successful is serving others, serving themselves, and providing that community uh, for their members. And I should also note that every person that we induct since 2010 um, I, either is or becomes an IEEE member. So for those that are involved at the section or region level within the IEEE, you all know that Ada Kappa New Chapters are a source of new IEEE members. Now here are just a few things, some of the uh, projects that our HCAN chapters have engaged in over the last couple of years. Uh, it was mentioned earlier uh, that we really do engage in service. We view community outreach, community service as a way to, to kind of live our value of our values of character and attitude, right? So to have a positive outlook and also more importantly, to demonstrate your exemplary character through acts of service to one another uh, and to your community. So who do we induct? Undergraduate students, graduate students, faculty members, and professionals in the world uh, who have done meritorious work. Who are uh, HCAN members? I am one. Uh, many of us uh, on the panel today are certainly, but also we have some of the bigger names in tech that you can see there. Uh, and many, many more too. We have many of the past, present, and our future IEEE presidents are uh, IEEE Ada Kappa new members. Now, let's, in looking now in Region 10, we have 11 chapters total, one of which is waiting to be installed. Uh, and of the 10, two are inactive. Let's look at some of the great things that they do. You'll see a trend here. So, our Muta chapter at Waseda University. Um, has hosted a fantastic quiz game with our Moo New chapter, uh, where Sandro is the correspondent secretary in Trino, Italy, and our New Alpha chapter uh, at uh, the uh, in uh, Spain. And then also re outreach there. It's a global community. You can see in their flyer piece here advertising 
Um, we have a little, uh, this is from our website where we put a little uh, mark for the location of each of our chapters. And you can see we are certainly heavily concentrated in the United States, but absolutely growing around the world and uh, look forward hopefully to work with some of you to help grow uh, even more in Region 10. But then they also hosted here um, a course, uh, some coaching for one of the more challenging courses they offer at the university. And uh, it was very well received. And, and this is just one example of taking that service mentality, coupling it with their uh, high achieving scholastic experience, and then turning around and uh, serving others in their department, in their program, uh, by having folks that did well in that course come back and tutor and provide guidance there. Our Muzai chapter, uh, which we'll hear more from a little bit later, actually, uh, at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, has hosted a number of activities. You can see some uh, there, but training, and uh, helping with uh, some ma uh, major science talks and the workshop on campus. Um, so again, both technical and outreach activities are, re are really fantastic. They are our best practice uh, and they provide a service uh, within the educational institution and within the profession too. Our Mu Alpha chapter in Kuala Lumpur uh, hosted, a, really hosted a number of workshops uh, one in particular with the pictures on the top there are from their introduction to Arduino and uh, the Internet of Things with Python over a couple of days. And then also, uh, even when uh, the pandemic hit, they transitioned along with the society into a remote operating posture and uh, hosted, you can see there, uh, like a, a, could be a Microsoft team. I'm not sure what that <laughs> actually is. Uh, WebEx or Zoom or, or something else, but then they hosted a uh, remote workshop uh, on Microsoft Excel, our Mu Alpha chapter. Then our Mu Kappa chapter uh, in Queensland uh, certainly engages in a great deal of tutoring uh, and uh, industry visits, uh, in this case, uh, going to the um, an, an energy test lab, and again, a variety of different things. Uh, really exciting opportunities for members and candidates alike. Uh, but all of these chapters are doing fantastic things and have found a niche in their local communities. So across Region 10 for the 10, uh, the eight active chapters for the 2019 to 2020 academic year, and I'll say we're still collecting this information, so these numbers will go up. The eight chapters uh, together contributed 5,192 hours of service. There were 64 activities reported, 33 uh, people were inducted into our chapters in uh, currently for this year, with 58 being reported for uh, calendar 2019. Now, you might be asking for those that are triple uh, student branches, how do we know all this? Well, we, we ask our chapters after every meeting, event, or activity, we have a form that they fill out and uh, we get this information and it provides that exchange between, as I put, the parent organization and the chapters. So um, we have a fantastic reporting and uh, it's something that is certainly also best practice uh, through that documentation. That they they will be able to access that information so there truly is a, a continuity both with our local advisors, the chapter advisors, uh, officer transitions, but then also through kind of the, the parent organization, the big IEEE to Kappa Nu, um, based in uh, Piscataway, New Jersey, that can then help provide information about what the chapter has done, what's been successful, what hasn't been um, over the years. So uh, taking a, a bit of a larger look at things, there are a number of programs hosted by the society um, that we invite all of our chapters and our members to participate in. So we're currently in the middle of the uh, second Tetris competition. Um, our uh, Malaysian chapter uh, here in Region 10, uh, a member of that chapter, won our inaugural Tetris competition. Congratulations there. Uh, but we are in the middle of the, the second one, so we look forward to see where in the world our next champion might come from. Um, very possibly here, but could also be somewhere else. So it's very exciting. 
Uh, and we actually stream those competitions, the kind of the later rounds of it on our uh, Twitch channel. So we encourage everyone to go check that out. As the pandemic hit, we developed our virtual tutoring center initiative or VTCI, which uh, takes advantage of our chapter's existing tutoring uh, activities, links them together and invites our alumni to participate. We'll be hosting our inaugural Ada Kappa New Experience uh, in about a month and a half and uh, truly exciting. Uh, gonna ha it's a more than just a virtual conference. It really will be a virtual community, uh, virtual gathering as well. And uh, as Ed mentioned, and, and Nancy as well, we, where possible, we do host an annual student leadership conference. We hope to be able to come back to that uh, very soon. We have a magazine, um, which again leads to another best practice. As a society, we publish The Bridge three times per year. It is the second most downloaded publication in the IEEE app. If you haven't checked it out, I encourage you all. If you don't have the app, go get the app and then go check out The Bridge. It is available to all IEEE members uh, and it really is a fantastic publication uh, with technical information, professional development and more. Um, but just as the society publishes the bridge, a fantastic, a great best practice for our really outstanding chapters is to publish their own publication, a newsletter, a department, or kind of a, a college-wide uh, publication, or even something just for their members. But it's a way; it, it truly is a best practice. We were founded on October 28th, and you can see here why I wanted to include this just to showcase. Um, some of the non-technical, non-service activities that we, our, our chapters host uh, as a community, right? every chapter is a community, uh, communities need to have fun too. And, and uh, beyond studying together, working together, striving towards common goals, uh, being able to meet each other socially where possible, obviously these pictures were taken uh, prior uh, to the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's a way to uh, again, find camaraderie uh, with one another. Our chapters also nominate uh, their members, their members of the faculty uh, and others for our various awards. Uh, these are pretty prestigious and uh, we just encourage everyone uh, if you are located where, with a current chapter to check these out. Uh, and, and if not, uh, if, you, if we can start a chapter, uh, you'll certainly be able to get, see more about these. And then finally, just uh, one little note here, a best practice, Ada Kappa News at the forefront, and this is really due to the leadership of our, our Board of Governors, our, our President Ed Resnick, our two student governors, um, certainly Sandro, who's here with us, and, and uh, Kate Brinker, and then also our staff led by Nancy Osten, who is here, in adapting to the virtual world uh, when the pandemic hit, and we actually launched the first global commencement ceremony for our professions, certainly within the IEEE and even beyond. Uh, it was a smashing success, and you can see a little bit about it there, but we truly did have um, a worldwide celebration of the Ada Kappa New members who graduated as a, an undergraduate degree or a graduate degree, uh, and, and it was hopefully something that will continue going forward too. But it, it was a way that uh, to recognize individual achievement and and to continue to build community. So what can you do if your chapter, uh, I'm sorry, if your institution, if you're affiliated with an institution, you have an Ada Kappa new chapter, fantastic. If you don't, let's look to see if we can start one. If you're involved at a section level or uh, region level or otherwise, include and invite our HKN chapters. They're a fantastic source of volunteers and, and really have people that are dedicated and committed. We do induct professionals, so let, please recommend to our chapters professionals that you think uh, are worthy of recognition. Recommend alumni to participate in our tutoring initiative. And also for our region and section volunteers, you can now view your Ada Kappa new members within your uh, region or society for society volunteers within OU Analytics. So, that is an, an overview of Ada Kappa New in the global sense. We continue to expand globally. We certainly are collecting a great deal of information and, and providing feedback to our chapters on their activities. 
I've shared some of their best practices, and I'll say we're going to hear from our, our current and former chapter leaders within the region shortly. Um, they'll provide additional detail as to um, some of their special sauce, what makes HKN run for them. Uh, and I certainly encourage you to uh, ask them questions, and I'll be here as well. Uh, but with that, I'll just say if there's for more information, um, our director, Nancy, who's available by email, I, I am as well. My email was provided earlier, and it's certainly in the bio uh, for this event. I'll thank you all for listening, and uh, if we have a moment, I can take a question here. Otherwise, we'll certainly be available uh, later to take questions. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, I, I, even due to the, the time, the, the question would be take, I think, in the uh, at, at the end of what this session. So, so thank you for giving all the information and also highlight some of the best practices in the region 10. And also, I believe uh, I, I, I'm glad to see that several outreach activity have been has become more and more. And now, uh, like uh, even the chapter outside US, I mean, what won't be our outreach. So I'm glad that I mean, the HK and take this initiative on that. Yeah, so uh, next, uh, I would like to uh, welcome Professor Lawrence Wong. Uh, so he will uh, talk uh, more about region a uh, specific growth strategy for actually uh, HKN and impactful program uh, for chapter management. So, uh, Professor Roland, please. Thank you, Supervati. Let me just get my slides on. Right. Hi, everybody. Yeah, so I just have a few slides here and I hope that some of the information that I will provide you will be useful. In fact, Michael covered a lot of what I was going to say. <laughs> right, so, but uh, before I begin, maybe I will just say a little bit about myself first. All right, uh, I'm currently a emeritus professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering at the National University of Singapore. Uh, I've been volunteering for a long time, so I'm pretty, uh, uh, mature in that sense, uh, almost aged in that sense. <laughs> Currently, I'm holding a few positions. This is just a few of them. Uh, I'm the director of the conference operations with the Communication Society. I'm a member of the IEEE Governance Committee, and I'm also a member of the Region 10 Nominations and Advisory Committee. And these are some of the positions I've held in the past, such as uh, president of uh, Member in Geographic Activities back in 2015-2016, Director of Region 10, Chair of the Singapore Section, Chair of the Computer Chapter, uh, Computer Society Chapter in Singapore. And below are some of the areas that I've been working on in terms of my research. All right, so you've heard about uh, the number of various chapters uh, from both uh, Ed and also from uh, Michael. So we have 12, two of which uh, we are trying to uh, get them active again, and one in the process of being uh, formed. Okay, so these are the 12, and you can see in the countries that they come from, there is from India, Thailand, uh, Taiwan, Pakistan, Singapore, Australia, Malaysia, Hong Kong, and Japan. Okay, so indeed, as you have heard from both uh, all the speakers so far, you know, uh, uh, you cannot join to be a HKN member. You are invited and inducted, and it's because of your scholastic achievements and your character. And so, it the burden is on us as uh, inducted members to show great integrity and dynamism in what we do. Uh, you're imbued with a lot of creative talent, which we hope you can help to reach out to your community. Uh, the desire to support the disadvantaged, the underprivileged, and the marginalized, and that's where your community commitments and your community efforts come in. And to develop lifelong uh, relationships, so networking is an important part of being a HKN member. And you build bridges so that you can uplift common good. So uh, much of this has already been mentioned earlier, right? We can you know, as a uh, part of the activities you can do within the HKM chapter in your respective institutions, you can organize workshops. Uh, and the workshop need not necessarily be related to technical stuff. It can be related to soft skills as well. Industry visits, competitions, as you saw earlier. Uh, one of the things that you will certainly be uh, much appreciate with among your peers is to do some sort of peer tutoring. And you've already seen, again, uh, Michael mentioned briefly about that. All right, 
uh, humanitarian and social support, seminars and talks, and career planning. So uh, these are usually the sort of things that are happening in the various chapters, uh, HKN chapters uh, across the world. So the other thing is partnerships. Uh, it's good to be able to partner with uh, various uh, entities, uh, both vertically and horizontally. What I mean by vertical would be like, you know, your school, your department and so on, your, your, your sections and so on. All right. Uh, but also horizontally would be like your student branch within your schools with other peer HKN chapters uh, within the same city, within the country, within the, you know, globally, all right? Uh, in addition to that, you can seek support from various sources, right? Including the region, uh, from the society itself. And if you do activities related to community support in terms of humanitarian technology and so on, you can also seek support from site. Site is the special interest groups on humanitarian technology and they have called for proposals, for example. So one of the things that is common to many of you is that unlike uh, the student chapters, for example, uh, unlike the affinity groups, uh, you have a little bit of a disadvantage because you do not have rebates. So you also have to think about how to be enterprising such that you can get some form of uh, resources to get your activities going, all right? So um, then again, these are the sources that you can, can work with, all right? So these are some of the examples that I, 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 I think might be worth thinking about. This year's uh, pandemic has made us all very good at doing virtual events, <laughs> just as what we are doing right now. So, you know, we have the WebEx. Uh, most of you in your schools, you will may probably have Zoom uh, accounts where you can set up Zoom sessions and so on. So take advantage of this, you know, where you can easily uh, uh, organize virtual events, not only within your own chapter, but maybe uh, in partnership with other HKN chapters. All right, share your experiences and ideas with other HKN. Um, if you go to the organization roster, you can, uh, IEEE organization roster, uh, you can see who are all the uh, uh, chapter, uh, HKN chapter uh, members within the respective chapters. So you can easily reach out to them, uh, say, hey, let's do something together, you know, all right. You can organize cultural and student related events across the region, not again, not only within your locality. So you can expand the scope of what you're doing. Uh, and again, I mentioned that uh, uh, sometimes you need resources, so you have to also think out of the box to see what enterprising activities or events that you can do to generate revenue so that you are able to support the activities that you can. All right. And finally, to develop long term sustainable support commitments from the department and or the section. So uh, this is very important. I think generally in all the institutions, uh, whether it's in the department or at the university as a whole, uh, within the student body, there are usually uh, sources of funding that are available for various clubs and so on. Uh, but at the same time, uh, reach out to your sections. All right. Uh, you'd be surprised uh, how uh, receptive the sections are because after all, you are a very distinguished uh, community here, you are recognized for the achievements that you have made. And most sections, I would believe, would be very receptive to help you out if you reach out to them. So I think with that, I kind of come to a close to all my slides. All right. Yep. And that's about what I have to say. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Lawrence. Uh, yeah, for for I mean giving like uh, tips and direction for, yeah, the the HKN okay for for their management. So I hope we we have a chance to to get your insights uh, later on uh, in this session. Yeah, thank you again. And and next, uh, I would like to invite Sandro Santoni, so the student governor. So uh, he will talk about the reflection on triple. E on the engage, equip, empower in student life. So, Sandro, uh, yeah, please. Um, Can you share um, the screen? 
Yeah, as I am with my phone right now, um, I would like to ask, I don't know, maybe Nancy um, to be the presenter. Uh, she has my presentation on her computer. Okay. One second, I'll make her presenter. Thank you, Nancy. Um, okay. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, my name is Sandro Sartoni, and I am one of the two IEEE HKN student governors. Uh, basically, my role is to be the um, student representative of all student members from all around the world. And I'll be talking about a reflection on triple E's that are engaged, keep, and empower in students' life. Um, so moving on to the next um, slide, please. Okay. So I would like to start with a, a reflection on students' life. So I believe that we students, we live a very unique experience. I mean, the joy of getting to know new people, uh, the personal growth that shapes us into uh, adults, not only from a uh, personal point of view, but also from a um, technical point of view. Uh, still, I think that sometimes students face challenges. In my experience, I have met a lot of students who are not satisfied with their current university path. Um, they feel like, uh, you know, attending lectures and hopefully passing exams, uh, they feel like this is not enough. Um, we are talking about ambitious people. We are talking about people who desire to acquire new skills and or uh, who are willing to improve their university community and to serve other students. So moving on to the next slide, thank you. Um, I believe that IEEE HKN is a great solution for all of these active and dynamic students. And as we were saying before, we have three uh, core values, scholarship, character, and attitude. So yeah, obviously we value people who are able to achieve great scores on exams, but this is not enough. We want people who are willing to put some extra effort to put in practice um, their vision. And it's thanks to these resourceful students that our chapters can thrive. Now, how do we make sure that these active students are into our chapter. The first step is engaging new students. So moving to the next one, please. Our chapters have developed several ways to engage new students. We have, for example, um, presentations in class. We have, and this with the help of university professors, obviously. We have promotion through events. The pictures we were seeing, we were looking before, um, has been taken on one of our uh, hackathons in Turin, uh, where we had the chance to introduce who we are as an association, and also social media campaigns, obviously. And it is thanks to these new members that our chapters can reach new goals from year to year. So obviously, we are um, always looking for new candidates. Um, so now that we have engaged new students, moving to the next slide, we need to equip them. Next slide, please. So what does it mean to equip new students? Um, our members need to get all the tools they need, obviously, to implement their vision. Now, this can take many forms. It could be, for example, um, support from chapter officers, faculty advisor, knowledge from alumni. They may have faced uh, problems previously. We are facing right now. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel every time, obviously. And best practices shared in our chapter leaders code, which are calls we organize monthly, where every um, chapter officer from all the chapters from all around the world can share their best practices, obviously. 
And this is where our members learn new skills. And we're talking about hard skills, but also soft skills. And they get familiar with how IEEE HKN um, operates. And this is a crucial step because I'm not saying 100%, but most part of having a successful chapter is having prepared members. So if you have engaged members and you equip them and you give them all the tools they need to um, put in practice their vision, you have, moving to the next um, slide, empower students. So I would like to start by uh, reporting some pictures. You can see international events, uh, resume workshops, um, and moving on to the next one, um, members only technical events, and to the last one, most importantly, creating a community of friends. So you can see these are pretty much different pictures, different being that they come from very different places. Obviously, we are a worldwide um, organization, uh, and what chapters do can change from chapter to chapter, from country to country, from IEEE region to IEEE region, obviously. So there is not a fixed way of, of achieving one's goal. But still, there is a common root here. And the common root is that people in our chapters are willing to um, improve the university community and they are growing as people. Not only from a technical point of view, but also from a personal point of view, in terms of soft skills, in terms of leadership. I honestly cannot think of many associations. In fact, I cannot think of any association, at least to the best of my knowledge, that gives you an opportunity to um, develop leadership skills, um, learn how to uh, manage and lead groups of people, uh, learn how to raise funds learn how to organize events and work within uh, deadlines, learn how to interact with professionals and or professors while still being a student in a global community. And I'm a proof of that, I mean. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is just to say that HKN enables students who are willing to do more with these great opportunities, and it's just a matter of people wanting to do more. And this leads to the conclusion, which is last slides. Uh, sorry, this is what empowered IEEE can students can do from all around the world. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sandro. Yeah, so uh, yeah, help we do best to to motivate uh, our HK and uh, like the student. Uh, so that they could uh, encourage uh, so many more activities. Yeah. Uh, so uh, next, uh, we come to the uh, panel discussion okay, on the best practices uh, of the chapter. And, and today we have uh, three representative uh, chapter uh, president. Uh, so they will go one by one. And yeah, because the time that we have, I believe you could fit uh, the, the presentation of the, the chapter into like five minutes. So we still have uh, uh, toward the end uh, for for some of the Q and A. Yeah. So first, uh, I would like to introduce. Uh, let me see. Yeah, maybe Kundan Kumar. Uh, yeah, from Indian Institute of Science. Yeah. So please uh, share your screen. So now the floor is yours. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, thank you for inviting me for this, uh, for IEEE Region 10, and I'm going to speak on the HKN platform. Yeah, uh, I'll just share my screen. Uh, is it visible to everyone? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm Kundan Kumar. I'm the chair of IEEE ICA student branch and also as a chapter president for uh, this MUJAI chapter at Indian Institute of Science. Like Indian Institute of Science is one of the best university in India and we are like uh, 100 year old, more than 100 year old. And we constituted this chapter in 2017. So we are recently a new chapter in this region. 
this is entire my chapter look like like we have some we have affinity group like wise and hcan plus we have various uh, societies councils and we come in the bangalore sections this was this was one of the induction uh, ceremony we conducted back in two years back and we were able to induct some 13 members most of them are senior members and life members life fellows this is my member statistics look like like uh, so we are trying to encourage more graduate student to become a member and uh, we, we, when we look like uh, when i see in the overall statistics of ieee memberships i have 164 ieee memberships most of them are graduate member with 150 and ieee fellows we are 15 so we are trying to trying to convince or those who qualify for the inductions so we can increase our member statistics of hcan and this year we plan to have a membership in march but due to pandemic we had some uncertainty scenarios so we shifted into October. So possibly we'll be doing our membership next month. Uh, in our like when I talk about best practices, then we came with that something like event calendar. So we try to have a various mix of activities, seminar, workshop, outreach. So we have very flagship events, some happening as Indian Institute of Science. One is Japan Tech Fair, like where we collaborate most with all the Japanese farms, universities, and host one day technical and second day cultural program, which is attended by more than 5,000 people. So we partner with them and try to spread our words and inspire people to form various platform. Then we have open day. I'll talk about in a bit more. Then we have our own uh, celebration day. We have outreach event, which I'm going to talk about a bit. Then we have a seminar and workshops. And this is pretty my calendar look like. We have some induction eligibility, which is in line to most of the HKN policies. So I'll just move this to next. Yeah, we, we have some specific membership drive campaigns, which we do on various IEEE organization and flagship event, where we have a, we come across all the IEEE chapters, we coordinate with other various activity section and councils. And we, in the meantime, we try to spread about words about HKN to alumni members and all the people who can join us. Uh, like coming to event, uh, uh, like there was some regarding rebates. So we are also part of university partnership program of IEEE, and we're one of the 17 university around the world. So we get some funding with UPP to do STEM activities in the region. So we gave, we try to, in, in, to partner with them and do events uh, with UPP. So this is one of the outreach activities. In outreach activities look like this. We go to various universities and colleges across India, and we speak about what are the benefits of IEEE, plus some technical, if they want to host some specific like emerging areas in quantum computing or AI or any other domains, then we have a group of expertise who become our mentor and ambassadors that can come from HKN itself, and they can go and take those outreach activities in that particular campus and we bear all the logistics costs and this. Same coming to Open Day Initiative. Open Day is like a general initiative taken by Indian Institute of Science itself, where university opens a door to general public uh, to showcase its research and promote STEM among the community. It is atten attended by more than 30,000, 30K to 50K people. So uh, this is a very big platform for us. So the, here we try to bring almost all the chapters, affinity groups and HKN itself. So we we try to bring all the members of HKN to show their showcase their research and share their experiences on how can they join, like how they can carry out research, what STEMs look like to school kids, to graduate students. This is one of the flagship initiative we are part of. Like other initiatives, which includes, we have a joint exec meetings in association with other affinity groups and society chapters. We know better and sync up with them uh, in terms of uh, logistics and volunteer opportunities. We try to have minimum one exec meeting every month. Exec committee of which tenures we fix at two years. We, we are trying to build this alumni coordinator roles because um, we have a very large pool of alumni, 100 year old, we are 100 year old in institute and HKN chapter started recently. So how can we bring alumni to be the part of this? Because they established at various places and we can leverage those talent and leadership in training and this. So we are trying to bring an uh, alumni coordinator role who can uh, take these positions. We are trying to associate with various department at like ECS, we call it ECS here, Electrical Engineering Computer Science at IIC to support a student and faculty seminar. If they want to discuss about their research or you want to tutor something Python classes, they can take our platform. And if they are HKN members, then they will invite them to be the part of this. The pretty we are doing um, with different community, we are alumni groups. We are trying to partner with the different uh, uh, like a department at the Institute. And this is the major source of our funding, University Partnership Program. We are one of the 17 university 
uh, among the world to it. So we get um, some fundings from them, which we can partner and utilize for our own activities. This is pretty uh, from my side, I think. If you have any questions, I can take. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Kundan, yeah, for presenting activity, and I believe that the like the partnership, many initiative, and also like an event calendar is very good idea. Yes. Like to keep up, and then also like, I mean, try to recruit member, and then yes. yeah, have a chapter grow as well. Yeah, so thank you. Uh, yeah, next uh we have the Miss Tita Pon Kanok Ratana uh from the Mu Teta chapter uh, from Thailand. Yeah, so she will give presentation. So, Ms. Tita Pond, uh, please. Thank you very much. Uh, I couldn't change the slide. Prisma, I have given presenter access. Can you try? Could you, could you give uh, the access to another account? Because now I'm using mobile to to speak. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. Good to go. Yes, okay. Can you see my slide? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Tita Poinganok Ratana. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, SYWL uh, Student Track, for giving me this opportunity to uh, present our Mu Data chapter. I am a HKN uh, chapter president from Jualungpong University. So, uh, Let's see if we can. Okay. So here is our uh, chapter officers. Sorry, it's a bit slow here. Okay, so here is the chapter officers. So we have Associate Professor Dr. Supavadi Aramvit as our faculty advisor. And uh, most of our officers are graduate students in Chualongkorn University. And here is the day uh, when we had the chapter induction and installation ceremony back in 2016. So uh, yeah, this is like the, the formal uh, ritual. I could say that this is like the most formal event in my life. <laughs> But it's actually uh, the great experience for us. Okay, and um, from uh, from the induction, so we have done uh, many activities, and we actually uh, won the outstanding chapter award uh, from uh, the. Committee, so we won the 2015 to 2016 at 3 HKN OCA uh, winners, and our faculty, advi faculty advisor received the award um, at the event in Florida, USA, back in 2017. And we had held uh, many activities. Uh, for example, we used to have a uh, Virtual meeting with uh, Milgaba chapter from uh, the University of Queensland, Australia, um, in 2017. So at that time, um, uh, the Milgaba chapter just started to form the, the the team. So we had a discussion on how to form an effective team, how to recruit more members, and assign tasks to each member. And you know, it was a great experience to share um, um, different um, perspective from each member. And then we have the activity, like a visit from IEEE student branch, Telkom University from Indonesia, and um, uh, IEEE HKN Mu Data chapter 
So this held in our department, electrical engineering at CU. And uh, the activities include the um, student activities experience exchange. And we also had the joint technical seminar between two chapters and the research lab visit. And in order to um, promote IEEE and to uh, recruit more members, we need to go out and reach people. So this is a good opportunity for us to be able to, to promote the event um, in this uh, exhibition and National Science and Technology Fair, which is a big event in Thailand that has like more than 1,000 participants from like um, many, uh, areas like students, researchers, teachers, business, or even industries. So in this one, we can recruit more IEEE professional and student members and can promote IEEE Thailand section and also our new data chapter. And we also present some of our research from the laboratory. So in this one, you can see there's a webcam camera uh, which uh, detect the face. So this one, we show the face recognition, which draws uh, a lot of interest from the audience. And this one is the teacher in service program. It's a training and workshop. And I could say that this is like the, the most uh, frequent event that we, we held. So we had this one in Thailand for four, for three times and in Bali, Indonesia in SYWL 2018, another one time. And this uh, has the part participants from uh, secondary school teachers from um, many different fields uh, related to uh, engineering. And there's uh, two hands-on activities that we can um, train the teachers to, you know, improve the critical thinking and uh, the creative thinking because they need to work as a team in which they don't know each other and they need to to build a device uh, following the equipment that we provided. So it's really fun and a great um, experience for our officers as well. And from that uh, activity, we get uh, uh, published from uh, this TISP in the Bridge magazine. So it's uh, really a great honor for us to be able to, you know, to share experience to other IEEE members. And uh, the next is also about the training and workshop, but this time we aim for the undergraduate students so we we reach the uh, undergraduate undergraduate students at the Muban Chongbung Ratchapat University, which is in Ratchaburi province, and we can promote IEEE Thailand section, IEEE HKN, and some fundings and activities from IEEE, and also we train students on how to write the effective proposal for. Um, digital or science competition in Thailand or even uh, in the level of um, international also. So they can have the idea of how to um, think or um, propose something and make it interesting. Next is the panel discussion on role of women in engineering. So this one, uh, the BYE IEEE Gujarat section in association with Madhavi University has organized this panel on uh, the occasion of International Women in Engineering Day. So this one is uh, really uh, motivated and inspiring for women who tries to become an engineer or who tries to break into this uh, research area. Because like in this uh -huh. event, we, we has uh, uh, like the lesson learned from becoming a leader, so we also discuss about how to balance professional or and personal life, especially in this pandemic time, and also giving advice for, uh, yeah, for women and young girls over there. And here is the fun part. So we uh, usually celebrate HKN Founders Day 
on uh, October 28th in every year. Mostly we um, celebrate in our university. And this is a uh, good chance to meet all the members and to discuss community service plan and engage new members to join us and learn more on HKN. We also have um, other activities related to um, meeting, seminar, uh, technical seminar, and also the um, distinguished lecture. Like for example, we have IEEE annual meeting Thailand section, which happens every year. We also um, a part of a committee in the International Conference on Multimedia Modeling, and um, we are part of the Distinguished Lecture, in which um, we have the speakers who are the expert on on the specific topic and to give a talk to us on the uh, similar to our research area, and this is a very um, useful and very acknowledged for students and yeah and we also being a part of global seminar and ai centennial celebration and back in the last year 2019 we are also a committee in ie icce asia which is uh, uh, the great conference on the signal processing and and um this uh multimedia model processing also. So this one is really a great experience for us. And you know, it actually developed the management skills and leadership skills. So for our best practices, I would say that it is really important to expand the community network and to collaborate with leaders and trainees and um, be motivated, creative and passionate on what you do because yeah because i e um volunteering it actually takes um takes uh like a service mind and you need to to love what you do and be passionate about it and also eager to learn new things don't afraid to try new things and teamwork which is really important because we can't do anything like by by yourself like alone so we need to have a good team and yeah, let's success together. So that is all from uh, the new chapter, new data chapter. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Tita Porn, for for giving all, all the activities that has been done by the the new data chapters. Yeah. Uh, okay. Next, uh, we move to the Obo Sao uh, from HK and chapter president from uh, Mu Kappa. Yo, so the, now the floor is yours. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um. Uh. Hello, everyone. Uh. My name is Albo Joe, and I'm currently the chair of uh a a EHKN chapter in the University of Queensland. Uh. And I'm also working as a PhD student studying in the University of Queensland. Um. Sorry for the short notice that I. I'm currently, due to the pandemic, I'm currently stuck in my home country, so I don't have access to most of the files that we have in uh, our HKN chapter. So I didn't prepare a slide, so I would just give an oral talk to share some of our experiences. Uh, so uh, our IEEE HKN chapter uh, has now, is I think it's the first uh, HKN chapter in Australia. And now we have around 15 members, including undergraduate students and uh, graduate students. So, uh, and we, Professor Kapan Saha is working as a faculty advisor for a chapter. So, uh, in terms of the best practices, I would like to il illustrate three kinds of events that we had in the past. And uh, I think both of these events have been very well received and uh, uh, has, we have achieved these successful events. So uh, the first and the most popular one is the site visit. We have organized several site visits every year. And uh, I think uh, that has been very attractive to our members and the students of our, uh, and the students of in, in our university. So we have been to AEMO Compline, uh, Australian energy market operator. So it is one of Australia's biggest utility, power utility. 
uh, we have been we have visit visited there, and their manager has shown us about their control room where we can see the whole Australian national grid and how do they dispatch power and how do they like. It, it, it is kind of very, it is very cool, and they also gave us a very informative uh, presentation on what they have been doing uh, with what kind of challenging they are having with the renewable integration and you know everything. And uh, due that uh, most of our members were in electrical background, so the both of them have been uh, benefited a lot from this kind of event. And we we have also organized some. I visit like solar farm. We have been to visited the solar farm of our Gatton campus, where we can actually see the solar panels and how that they work and how that they integrate to the grid. And uh, yeah, it has benefited us a lot. And uh, yeah, that that's all for the site visit. And the second uh, the second kind of events is like we we are thinking that we as a as an HKN chapter we should do something. You know, we should do some contribution to our local community. So. We have organized some kind of workshops, and I think one of them is we have organized a 3D print workshop in a local primary school, where we, uh, you know, we uh, we work together with the local teachers. We brought a 3D printer for for the students to learn about the 3D modeling and design. We gave some talks on how 3D printing is used to the primary students, and we. Also, some delivered some workshops in which the students can make a 3D model themselves. I think it has been uh, very meaningful because it, it is kind of um, uh, our contribution to the local community, and it has also, uh, you know, attracts the interest of the local primary students on on their interest on science and technology and engineering. And uh, the third. Uh, the third kind of events is we we are running the technical talks, ever te technical talks every year. And actually, we just had a virtual technical talk via Zoom uh, a couple of weeks back, where we have invited two very successful entrepreneurs uh, who used to work at the academia in our university, and now they are uh, they are running a startup company based on the research outcome they, they have they have achieved. And they share their experience on how to commercialize your research outcomes. And uh, we had a kind of a, a very heated discussion among our students and the, uh, the our, our guest speakers. I think it provided a very good insight for our students to on their future career. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that those those re events were the most. Uh, representative events that we have been uh, we have been done in the past, and uh, uh, I I think I learned a lot from our uh, from our, the other chapters when I was uh, listening to your presentations. And yeah, we hope to achieve more in the future. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. And yeah, we do hope that uh, when the the pandemic uh, is has a decreasing degree, you could return. Uh, back to I mean Australia. So thank you for uh, giving us uh, the yeah or, or the the information and uh, about the activity of of your chapters. Yeah. So uh, I believe we are now running towards the end. So like uh, all the presentation, I believe are very good and I think it stimulate uh, like the how how we could uh, like establish and run uh, the chapter and also like a good experience sharing as well. Uh, like before we move to the closing, so can everyone uh, please turn on the camera? So we would like to have one group photo uh, for everyone on the screen. I, I hope the network should be fine now. I believe like toward the beginning is, is some kind of the technical glitch, so it's kind of slow. Okay, so we have Nancy, Sia. I believe the team as well, if you could turn on the camera, the team, we have good team here and Sia, who is our general chair also attend. Okay, I believe, yeah, maybe uh, I will take one and maybe also the team can also take one. So one, two, three, smile. I think it should be fine. You want one more? Um, Savi, you want one more? 
are there any like cash key and uh log uh, I mean <laughs> post one more one two three okay so we have this so maybe uh, yeah yeah now uh, I, I would like to 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 uh, uh, handing everything back to 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 Sawi. Yeah, so she will handle the closing uh, remarks and on the session. Thanks, thanks, Prof. Uh, I would like to call now Mozemel. Uh, we have a quiz session planned for our attendees. So Mozemel, would you like to brief very fast? We are running out of time. Mozemil? Am I audible? Yes. Okay. Okay. Hello, participants. Now it's time for the quiz session. The basic aim of the quiz is to let us know about the basic knowledge of IEEE and what information you have extracted from the session of the HKM. So, moving on to the guidelines for the quiz session, which we have already shared with the team leads. So, only team lead is eligible to take the quiz. Multiple entries from the same team will lead to disqualification. Duration of quiz is of only three minutes. So quiz is designed on the basis of the general knowledge of IEEE and from the SAC sessions. Only mention that email address in the quiz which you have been used during the registration of the SYWF. The, in the next slide, you will uh, see the links with the timeline, session names, and uh, how to access the quiz. Next slide, please. Next right. Okay, so this is the basically the timeline. So team leads are requested to please visit the link of the respective session according to the date of the session. So uh, team leads who is this waiting for you, uh, you are requested to please go to your emails and click on the link for the quiz one. The time of your quiz starts now. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Emil. So while you guys are attending the quiz, I'll take a little bit of time to thank our speakers. Um, starting from Nancy, thanks a lot for joining us, even these our late hours. Thank you so much, Nancy. Thanks to Dr. Edward. Um, thanks, Prof. Lawrence. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Sandro, and the entire HKN team for doing a great job preparing our speakers, panelists to get our session done right. I would also like to thank our panel speakers, Kundan, Sitapon, and Abo for joining us. And um, it has been a great session. I hope that uh, Region 10 uh, students have learn a lot more about HKN Society. So last but not least, let me also thank our moderator, Prof. Supavati, for doing a great job um, and uh, getting a conclude the session on time. So I believe that we, you guys might have a lot of Q&As. So we'll get those questions uh, at the networking session. So our team will drop the networking link in the chat as well. And the link has been also emailed to all of y'all. Um, let me thank our team, um, especially Dimple. Uh, Dimple, are you here? Would you like to say something? Dimple is the lead volunteer who plan everything. Thank you, Dimple. Would you like to say something? Uh, thank you, Shavi. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you, Shavi, so much. Uh, thank you, Professor Supavadi. Thank you, all the speakers, all the panelists for accepting our invitation and being here at the session. The session was really grateful. And yes, uh, Savitya, I mean, uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Great, Dimple, great. So let's uh, join in the networking sessions. I hope our speakers will there too. So we'll we'll be able to discuss more further about HKN, how to form a chapter and many more at the networking sessions. So see you all. And last but not least, tomorrow our session will be at 1 p.m. Bangkok time. Uh, we'll be bringing four speakers from different multinational companies. So don't miss the session, guys. More details will be sent to you all as a reminder before end of today. Thanks a lot. So thank you. Yeah. So we off to the. Yeah. Thank you. Networking. Yes.
Yeah, yeah. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all.